Can either of you shed a little bit of light more specifically on why it's so important, why this explosive growth, and why we should actually care about the legal, policy, ethical issues of AI? One of the things that sticks out in my mind is some research that McKenzie did recently where, it, where they describe AI as a, contribu a contributing factor to the transformation of society. And I just want to quote what they're saying about the transformation of our society, that it's happening 10 times faster and at 300 times the scale, or roughly 3,000 times faster than the impact of the Industrial Revolution. And, you know, a lot of people compare this uh, revolution to the Industrial uh, Revolution, but I think it's the speed and the real core underpinning that AI is giving to, is contributing to that transformation of our society that makes the, these discussions so important. It's not just about handing over judgment and decisions to a machine that a human would do otherwise. It really is about sort of the loss of a locus of control, either a loss of a locus of control for the individual. So when you're in an autonomous car, you know, you are not driving, the car is driving unless you have the ability to stop and then actually intervene. But again, if it's milliseconds, that might not be possible. It's really about, are we handing over control to a entity that we are willing to trust will be as fair, if not more fair than a human. And that's where it gets to like um, Kay said with Europe. So I think it's just the scale at which it may be used and the scale of the impacts of the decisions. There's always been the ability to tailor your experience even before the internet um, in terms of uh, what services were provided to you, people were making sense by hand what things you should receive in the mail in terms of ads, um, or they were using automa what was called automated data processing in the 1970s. Privacy laws came back in the 1970s when you started doing automated data processing, and again, these machines were nowhere near as fast as what we had today, but that somehow there could be a correlation of this person lives at this address, they're getting this type of heart medication, they also are on this type of insurance. At what point do you need to say, well, those are correlations that you shouldn't be able to draw unless that person is given consent? And so I think artificial intelligence, much like those things that came before, it's just the scale and the impact of what this machine might be able to make decisions that will impact your life will be. And so you're right that it's, a, it's, a, it's the same trend, but I think it's the, sh the sheer scope and impact that we need to actually take in consideration. So the issue then is one of scale and then one of pervasiveness. Is that why the issue of uh, the challenge of AI ethics has received such a high profile in recent days? Obviously, you know, there's a seminal quote from Stephen Hawking on the 1st of May 2014, when he said that this could be the best thing that we've ever done or, the, or our last, you know. And I think that really captured the attention of the media. And, and whilst there were lots of us thinking about these things before, um, it's become so much part of, of a more public conversation now. That's a really important thing because, you know, um, one of the questions that one of the things we talk we have been talking about is um, taking some control for ourselves as individuals. And unless we empower people to do that, then by through education, then people are not going to be able to take back that power. Um, and so I uh, and, and also I think that. There's an issue around um, that we're seeing in social media at the moment. I've seen it a lot on Twitter in the last two days that people are saying, oh, well, move. Don't, you know, there's, uh, we've got, we have to defend our privacy. There's a lot of fear of surveillance, switching to Tor and, and more secure uses of email and things like that. That is not a positive sign for um, the way that, that some people in, in our society are thinking about artificial intelligence. Well, of course, there's also a great concern that the robots are going to be taking over our jobs. And especially in light of the political climate today, that's particularly so, particularly uh, pronounced, those concerns. And so what about that? That must intersect the, the ethical perspectives in one way or another as well. How do we think about that? AI, in my view, is a technology that will benefit mankind or humankind enormously. 
And um, there are some great challenges that we have as humans and for our planet that we really can't solve without AI. And so we certainly don't want to see a groundswell of, of opinion against AI by people who are losing their jobs to it. Um, we've all read for the Ox of Martin study and the Bank of America study that say that, you know, 40 seven and I think 52% of, of jobs in America currently done um, will go to automation in the next 15 or 20 years. But we have to think about how the, about the complexity of, of job loss because we don't know what the future jobs are going to be. But what we do know is that as people lose their jobs and something that hasn't been done in the past, we need and can use AI to retool and reskill those that that work that workforce to create the jobs of the future. As jobs are lost because they can be automated, what do we as society owe those people whose jobs have been displaced to help them retool, retrain as best as possible for something else? Um, and the jury is out as to whether more jobs will be created versus destroyed as a result of artificial intelligence. So we need to monitor that and be aware of it. We also need to be aware that there is what's called the unemployment effect on people's health, which is we humans need to have a purpose. And so a future in which we don't need to work because artificial intelligence is doing everything may actually not be a nirvana as it sounds like because we won't have purposes or maybe we'll find purposes through advocations as opposed to vocations. But that's a collective conversation we need to have, which is, where are we going together as a society? How can we make sure we bring as many people along? And as Kay said, ideally make it so they're not as fearful about artificial intelligence. As a historian by background, uh, I really worry about the analogies with the Industrial Revolution because the Industrial Revolution hurt a great deal of people over a long period. And yes, we came through it and we, and we developed something better. But um, the it looks as if this industrial revolution uh, will be much faster and we need to prepare not to hurt as many people very quickly. So Kay is absolutely right that this is gonna happen in a much shorter time period. It may be as big if not bigger change. And so having again that conversation about what do we as society owe each other is really key to have now um, because we don't know, any, none of us know if the job we're currently doing today in two or three years will be done better by a machine. What advice, suggestions do you have for people who are thinking about uh, the law in and the, the evolving law and in regard to to AI? Well, I think the advice to lawyers is that very soon you will be receiving, you will see those um, cases coming across your desk and you need to get up to speed around artificial intelligence and um, what's going on in artificial intelligence now. I think in uh, just going back to that job creation thing, actually there are going to be a lot of jobs around, um, so we're not going to kill all the lawyers by automating them um, just yet, uh, because we are going to see experts needed in court, for example, instead of cross-examining a driver, um, we might have to cross-examine an algorithm, aka an expert in this system. Um, if you are going to be somebody, if you are in any business, you need to be looking at what AI can do for you and what the impact of AI will be on your business. So there are two pieces of that, um, because I genuinely believe that AI will change everything. And if you don't start looking now, you will be too far behind. And David Bray, your thoughts on guidance for policymakers who are looking at the policy, the public sector policy and regulatory side of this. Any, any thoughts or guidance very, very quickly? Cloud computing in some respects is the appetizer. Artificial intelligence and the internet of everything is really going to be the main course that we're going to be uh, consuming over the next five years. And I don't know if I can necessarily give advice to necessary policymakers, but I would say what Kay said, for any organization, any entity, recognize that this will disrupt how you operate. And it's a question of whether or not you are very intentional about it or someone else is going to do it to you. So start on that journey now, start having conversations. And if there's one thing I'd really call out is look at the open AI effort. 
um, and other efforts like it that are trying to make this open and available to people as a place to either begin experimenting or if you don't have the time to experiment, maybe have some of your employees begin to experiment with what's possible because we're only going to get the expertise we need to know in this era through the experiments that we need to do with artificial intelligence.